Let's continue with a debug configuration. So I would just minimize some of the components and uh, let's start with Cortex M4. I would highlight this part. I would click on this down arrow next to the bug icon and I would select the debug configurations. I would double click on the last position. So STM32 Cortex M CC++ application. It would automatically generate the configuration of the of the debug process so this proper elf file proper project name within the debugger i would uh, keep most of the settings but i would just enable this cross trigger interface cti as we would like to have but of course working synchronously and uh, within so i would i need to apply then I go to startup and within startup I would add the configuration from Cortex M0 Plus as well. So project M0 Plus, build configuration debug and then I would just remove the load symbols because load symbols will load within Cortex M0 Plus debug part. Okay, so this is all for Cortex M4 debug configuration. Important point is to have this arrow uh, next to Cortex M4 because we would like to start the project, the code from Cortex M4 core as it is in fact activating the Cortex M0 Plus later on. I click apply. I will not start the debug yet. Click close and then I would highlight Cortex M0 Plus again down arrow next to the back icon debug configurations, double click on this last position. And now uh, the same story with Cortex M0 Plus. From first tab, no, no change uh, from the debugger. I need to increase the, let's say, port number. We will not uh, reset the core. Uh, we need uh, this cross trigger interface. So I would select both options. I click apply. And we will need to modify as well the startup configuration. Uh, so I just highlight it and press edit. And from this, I would disable download. This download option is done already within the Cortex M4 debug configuration. I press OK, apply and close. Now we are ready to start a debug session. OK, let's continue with a debug session. My board is already connected. We can start uh, debug one by one. So at the beginning, we are starting already configured uh, Cortex M4 configuration. I start debug. Before activating uh, the code and uh, starting the next configuration, we can configure and run a terminal within uh, our console. So to do this, we can either select already um, configured uh, console or we can create a new one by clicking this open console and selecting the command uh, shell console. So the connection type, it will be serial port. Connection name, we can uh, select, uh, let's say the new name, for example. So it will be uh, hardware semaphore terminal. We'll need to select the virtual COM port, which is assigned to our board. In my case, it is COM12. And as you remember, uh, we have configured our USART 2 to 115,000 8-bit data, no parity, a one-stop bit. So exactly the same configuration. I press finished and I press OK. Uh, after this, this uh, terminal would be visible within this uh, small monitor icon. If I press this down arrow, I can see this hardware semaphore terminal. It is connected. If I select this, I can see already blinking cursor over here. To disconnect, I should need should use this icon, red icon. The green uh, small dots are used for connection. And uh, to close the console, we need to use this button. So now let's uh, run the code. And as you can see, our Cortex M4, as this is the only one, is uh, sending the data over USART. Uh, so now we can add to this uh, the second configuration. So I go to this small arrow next to the back icon without stopping the Cortex M4 core. 
debug configurations Cortex M0 plus debug. So now, as you can see, Cortex M0 plus is starting execution as well. And now we can see one by one Cortex M4, Cortex M0 plus. So both cores are working. What we can look uh, here as well is uh, to have a look on the say special function registers. Mm, so now it is the section for Cortex M M0 plus as this one is uh, highlighted. And we can have a look how the hardware semaphores looks like. We are using number nine. And if I would pause for a while. So let's go over here. Both are suspended. We can check what we've got within the settings. So within the hardware semaphore nine, uh, it is, uh, there is nothing at the moment. And within the Cortex M4, it is released as well. So let's uh, have a look once we set some breakpoints. So I would put the breakpoint uh, just after, uh, let's say, uh, hardware semaphore take. So maybe in this line, in one core, and in the second core, we will do the same. And now I will try to run the both code cores at the same time. So I would uh, press control and select both cores and try to start them one by one. So now there is interrupt from Cystic. Uh, okay, I'm, I landed with an Cortex M4 uh, on this uh, in this area. So Cortex M4, hardware semaphore. And now, if we have a look on this uh, on this register for hardware semaphore nine, we can see that it's locked. Core ID is four, which is uh, equal to Cortex M4, and our process ID is set to four as well. So I would try to run it. So now, for example, if I would uh, um, let's say put the breakpoint over here, so before the semaphore release for Cortex M0 plus. Uh, and I would uh, go to the hardware semaphore section. I can see that uh, for hardware semaphore 9, I can see the process ID 4, which is common for both. Cortex ID is 8 and lock is 1. Okay, so as we can see, it is working like expected. So now we can terminate the debug session one by one. And come back to code processing. As you can see, uh, terminal is still working because the code is executing on both cores. So we can observe um, the activity of the terminal. Thank you for watching this video.